As tea lovers who travel to different cities, have you ever asked your friends about which tea houses you should check out? It happens to us a lot. On one hand, it's a great chance to explore more teas and learn from fellow tea enthusiasts. And on the other hand, it's our way of supporting the growing tea community as tea lovers. That's the inspiration for this series, City Tea Houses. We'll visit different tea houses, talk to the people there, and of course, try out some tea. And what better city to start with than Ottawa, Ontario, the capital of Canada, where we live? We have some great tea houses around town where you can grab some tea. We offer private tea time, but you have to book those in advance on our website. But if you want to drop in somewhere for some delicious tea, be sure to check out these tea houses. This video was shot just before COVID-19 shut down the world in late February, March 2020. So don't be alarmed by our winter jackets. But rather than release this when everything was totally locked down, we waited until the reopening started. And now more than ever, these shops and their dedicated owners and staff need your support. We miss the days when everything was open and normal and we didn't have to guard a two meter bubble everywhere we go. But at least we can get out a little now. So drop by these places and say hi soon. <laughs> Did I scare you? So we're just cruising down Eddy Street here, approaching Cha Yi Maison de Thé, the Cha Yi Tea House, where we're going to have a chat with the owner, Dan. Can't wait to try some delicious tea. So here we are at the Maison de Thé Cha Yi in Gatineau, Quebec, Cha Yi Tea House, and I'm with Daniel, the owner. And we're just, yeah, we're just here to find out more about the tea house. We want our viewers, if they're coming into Ottawa, to see what a great place it is. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about the... Uh, the Maison du Thé Chai. Yeah, so we opened uh, 10 years ago. Mm. And since then, I uh, go to um, producing countries. So China, Taiwan, Japan, right. uh, directly uh, every spring to buy the teas directly from uh, small scale right. farmers. Right. Yeah. 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 So we have teapots uh, to where we mostly loose leaf teas. We have about 250 teas, um, mostly pure wow. leaf. Yeah. yeah, yeah, purely. So you're traveling all over to these sourcing countries. Now you have a pretty good, uh, or at least some selection of blends as well, right? Yes, so mm. our main products are pure leaf, of course. Uh, white and green, oolong, black, yep. poor, yellow teas. But we have some perfume teas and some medicinal blends. So we, I blend herbals, I, I, oh, nice. I studied herbology. So, um, so I make some Blends for sleep, for immune system, for awesome. digestion, those awesome. things. So yeah. really you've got everything covered. That's excellent. Mm. So if I'm a, a visitor in Ottawa, I'm a little bit new to tea, but I want to check out your place. What, what would you recommend I try? Where would you start me out? Mm. First, we always ask questions. We take yeah. everyone where they are. Like we are right. not snub about it at all. Yeah. So we just take everyone and just ask them questions to know what they're looking for and we'll just bring them. Our natural way is always to bring to pure right. leaf. Of course, but yeah. But often if people but start- But still trying to find a nice fit for that individual. Yes, yeah, that's we're wonderful. matchmakers. So nice. we're trying really to have the people to have the best experience. And um, so, so they, they feel like more tea you drink, more tea you want, you know? It's like a habit to take. So just to end our Taste change mm, during a year, a year yeah, and during a lifetime also. Uh -huh. So yeah. we're there to help we bring people come, we make them smell and we give a lot of information in the maximum we, yeah. we can. Also, we offer workshops so on tea. So people just know tea better. They, I show videos from, from my traveling, oh, awesome. how the tea is made, how to prepare it. So people just understand better and they appreciate better. That's awesome. Yeah. Great. <laughs> how about somebody who comes in and it displays a bit more knowledge or maybe d like pretty yeah. good level? Like, do you have some go-tos for, <laughs> yeah, of course, we always love that. And um, 
I don't know, like, what is there some teas, some more like your like some higher end tea you would steer them towards that's Definitely. more like your yeah we always try it's surprisingly it's it's fun to see that how we sell quite a lot of the like the entry level but we sell a lot of the right. high end level also right. like the middle the the of the sandwich are often the ones that <laughs> right. are forgotten so yeah, we yeah, have I know to what you mean. always bring and those are my favorite actually <laughs> it's like the the mid-range right i think for the bang for the buck it's like the the best one so exactly but, yeah uh, I am. We have different arrivals uh, every year that just bring like the interest of anyone that is really like the geeks that are really as as much as for the teapots and the teaware as for the teas. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And this is a really beautiful location. Uh, it's not too far from uh, right downtown Gatineau. Yeah. Uh, easy for people to find who are traveling or visiting Gatineau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many people from Ottawa, they're, sometimes they are scared to cross the bridge. Of course. Uh, they think it will be really complicated, but it's just by the war museum. Like Boot Street becomes Eddy, which is our street. Right on, yeah. And uh, Almetia is linking directly with um, Alexandria Bridge. Right. So it's really like super easy and there's free parking everywhere, even during weekdays right. around the shop. So yeah. it's really accessible. Yeah, so, that's true. I'm from from Ottawa, I know exactly what you mean, right? The river is some kind of mysterious barrier that somehow mm. we're always afraid to cross, but it's really not a big deal. Yeah, huh? there's nice things uh, on the other side too, and it's not yeah. so difficult. Anyway, here it's not it's, uh, one way on one side, and yeah, so it's very easy to find. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, what's your best seller? Japanese green teas. Okay. Definitely. Um, that was delicious, the one you served us when we just arrived. Oh, really sweet and uh, really nice sweetness and a nice lingering. Like sometimes they can be uh, heavy to the umami, but that was a beautiful yeah, selection. Yeah, refreshing. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, I think I'm really proud of the Japanese tea selection we have. We work with really small, uh, small scale farmers, families, 16 generation of tea makers. Wow. Uh, six, um, that are like so, so proud of working with people from Canada, you know. So um, uh, the oolongs also from Taiwan, we have the selection is really, really nice, I think. So um, poor. Also, we have uh, probably about 50 different pours. So, wow. so that makes, um, yeah, people that really love that, the three, t those three types of teas, they are really, really, uh, they have a lot of yeah, things to discover. Lots of selection, yeah. good deep, lots of room to explore, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. good range. And stability mm. in, in the, um, the supplies also. Right, so you work with, the, tend to work with the same producers year yes, over year. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. I don't know. It yeah, you choose. Mm-hmm. Cultivars. Really green in the cup. That's mm. why maybe mm. And that water is uh, 75, 75, 75 yeah. degrees. This is like a 95. 95 degrees. Yeah. So. Oh, cool. Perfect. Yes. All right, so I'm trying the Japanese green tea, which is super fun for me because it's not a type of tea I get to try very often. And you can see at the tea house, they actually set you up with, they've given me 75-ish degree water here. And you get to, uh, you get to gong fu yourself, which is totally awesome and a real rare treat. Infusion time, I'm gonna intuitively brew it because I'm really not sure. Um, maybe I'll ask. About 30 seconds, first one. There's quite a lot of tea actually. So maybe, maybe quicker? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get it out. <laughs> you can do the little infinite motion. Yeah. Oh, is that? Like the little, yeah. See, I'm not a Japanese tea guy, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm not I, it's like it's more and uh, yeah. pour the whole thing out. Oh, uh, oh. oh you! Oh, yes. I overdid it. Yes, I'm used to Just topping because, the teapot. Yes, um, I don't want it to infuse. With, uh, yeah. with uh, those teapots, yeah, 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 it's my fault. I didn't no, no, it's okay. Uh, normally, you take the measure in the cup. Oh, and oh. then you transfer. And then you transfer, so you ah, cannot ah. have more than what's next infusion. Next infusion, yes, I'll yes, do that right. Awesome. Yes. Sorry, this. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> 
is good to learn. And you are sloppy. I'm really sloppy. <laughs> no, it's pretty fun. I think you did. <laughs> You're not too uh, sensitive about uh, fingers. <laughs> yeah, we're mm. all like muted with the hot. Yeah, we always water. joke about those exactly. those tea vendors who do gong fu. You, you pour boiling water on your finger. You're like, ouch! And people look at you like, are you, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just boiling. <laughs> yeah, you know you can't die from that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second infusion, I got a little bit of uh, instruction to use the cup as a measurement device to make sure you don't overflow it from the pot. And then there was something about the infinity motion, which I will now try to demonstrate. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You make a little infinity in the cup, I think. I don't know. I really don't know. It's Japanese tea, so don't ask too much. It is delicious, though. Awesome. Oh, so spring-like with this warm weather. This is a perfect match. I've got some uh, nice green, uh, fresh, fresh green meadow. There's a nice sweetness, but some thick umami. This is delightful. Oh, this is so nice. It's above zero here in Ottawa, finally. So this is a really nice spring reminder. So I'm just walking down uh, Rue Principale, which is French for Main Street in Aylmer, heading towards uh, Serenité. Maison, there's the sign right there. Maison de thé, tea house, Serenité. Gorgeous spot. This is a cute little town. All kinds of historic buildings and stuff. So I'm looking forward to chatting with Norma. So I'm at Serenité Tea House in uh, Aylmer, Quebec, just a little bit uh, west of Gatineau, yeah. talking with Norma, the owner. Uh, yes. What a beautiful spot you have here. Yeah, it's uh, the main street now. It's really uh, picking up, evolving, mm -hmm. coming back. Yeah. In the eighties, it went down. Nineties, but now it's really booming and everything. And yeah, the beauty we have, it's uh, we have old houses like this one here. Yes. It's a hundred and twenty years old. Wow. So uh, we do a lot of little business, little uh, things, and all those buildings that are quite uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Aylmer is a really beautiful village, a nice spot for someone who is visiting Ottawa. Yeah. And um, how long has the Serenité Tea House been around? We did open in 2012. 2012. Yes, in, uh, in July. So it's going to be eight years in July this year. Awesome. Regarding that, so it's uh, it's uh, and it's always growing, growing every year. So sure. that's sure. fun. And what kind of uh, teas do you guys offer? Well, we offer almost everything uh, regarding like it's uh, we have natural tea in the green the white oolong right and we have the black tea for sure and also we got our herbal tea that it's uh, very popular and all in those tea uh, we have also tea with flavors that it's uh, a little bit like David tea sure, they did sure, introduce like yeah, they did introduce a lot in the market, so people are getting fan regarding that. But uh, we try to specialize a little bit IM. With right, uh, right, yeah. it's, a, it's a company in Montreal, it's called Camellia Sinensis. Right, right. And uh, they're very well known, uh, even yeah, yeah, of, course. Uh, of the border and everything. And uh, so they really provide us some really INT and Excellent, so on and yeah. so forth. That's, uh, but we have everything for everybody here. Yeah, you really have to, right? You, um, with a shop, you want to offer blends as well as pure teas. Excellent. Yeah, because sometimes we have demands. Uh, if we could order it, we do, but we cannot carry every everything because it's yeah. it's crazy. Like uh, so we, uh, 
we would need like three houses like this to have everything probably yeah you bet yeah <laughs> even with purity there's so much out there you just can't have everything <clears throat> no but uh we have 180 the wow. different like uh roe bus and uh, herbal right. and everything in the tea itself and also we're quite well renowned now for a product it's called bubble tea Oh, excellent. Yes, that is a, we're a big fans of bubble tea. You're, you're. Yeah, yeah, we love to drink bubble tea. So my daughter introduced that to us. She says, like, if you're going to have a tea house, why don't you bring that? I say, well, we're, we're going to try it. And it went so good that in 2016, we went to Taiwan. Oh, awesome. And uh, we did create our own brand that is jazz because my daughter's name is Jasmine. Cool. So we and I we always called her jazz. So we said, okay, we're gonna call it jazz bubble tea. And now we're in forty-five towns in Quebec as a distributor and two places in Ontario. This year we're open up in, in Ontario, but it's mainly here. It's it's so very popular here. Oh, that's so awesome. we're well renowned all over the place. But the tea also. So it's fun to see both are really growing uh, slowly but surely yeah absolutely that's that's interesting we were in uh, Las Vegas and we saw a tea house kind of with a similar concept right lots of uh, pure and um, higher end tea but also had bubble tea which I think is a great innovation to uh, you know get lots of different people through the door and, and keep the place vibrant and full of energy i think that's a really good a really great thing it, it was a very good uh, thing to to bring it on because in the tea business itself it's not as popular as coffee yeah. but it's really picking up it's uh, that that's yeah. the good thing uh, regarding that but bubble tea did help us a lot a lot to go and also what did happen like we did work very hard we have a tea house so we were trying new things and so on and so forth and then people after three years were saying uh, wow so we said, I said to my wife I says if we have a wow it's more than it's good it means that we yeah, have means, something yeah you so means you've nailed it that's it so right now what Beautiful. we're doing uh, everything is premature we just bought a machine because to offer the, the demand Perfect. And uh, so everything is calculated and everything. Uh, so it's, uh, to, to make it always, always the same, same, same thing. So awesome. it's, uh, cool. And we did open a new shop in the hall. It's called Jazz Bubble Tea. And it's... Uh, okay, cool. it's uh, All right. Well, we'll throw that up in the links too, yeah, so people it's... know where to find that. <laughs> and uh, maybe I always dread this when we do tea festivals ourselves. I always get yep. asked this question and I kind of dread it, but I got to ask it. Sure. Um, what would be sort of your... Um, your, let's start with your let's sort of your best seller in the bubble tea domain first, since we're talking about that. Yeah. Do you have a real clear best seller? And like well, or... yes. Every year we do we check what we sell in Quebec, and it's always raspberry with blueberry popping boba. The okay. the little okay. bubbles with juice inside. Right, right. Yeah, I know. It's uh, we sell that at eighty five percent compared to tapioca pearls. And oh, when wow. we did open, it was the, the other way around, it was 85%. Sure, because uh, people know the tapioca. Tapioca, and, but now the, the popping boba, it's called. Yeah. It's a really getting very popular. That's, it's, a new, yeah, it's a new thing. Cool. And in the tea, uh, green tea, it's, I would say, one of the most popular ones. Yeah, green tea is one of the most popular pure teas. That was my next question, so that's perfect. Oh, okay, yeah. And the reason probably I think I is... right now, actually, brewing. Uh, yeah, well, Louise just did... Uh, it's, a, it's a blend, it's called Desencho. It's a ah, cookie. Yeah, nice. It's a cookie cha, so it's a very, very, very nice. And what did happen also in the industry, they did a lot, a lot of study on the green tea. So right. when you're reading about tea, green tea always come because they got reference. Health benefits, well, that's it. antioxidants, etc. Here right? we right. are. So that's why it's so uh, very it popular. Yeah. Recognition, people know it. And the taste is very good. Of course, yeah. Awesome. And uh, anything, uh, any sort of, if folks are coming out to visit you here, anything else at Aylmer you would recommend they pop by and have a, have a look at? Sure. On the main street, uh, you got a new restaurant well new restaurant they've been there but uh, it's always like each year we got new things coming and so on and so yeah. forth so we got uh l'aubergis that it's uh, very good uh there's also the pasta down there that it's uh, vitalia that it's really well known and also there's a place that it's super nice it's called uh, british 
British? The British Hotel. Oh, the, the British, okay. The British Hotel was the first lot of story history down there. Oh, cool. Uh, in the beginning, uh, a lot of uh, prime minister went there, Sid Wilfrid Laurier and so on and so forth, uh -huh. went there to discuss and so on and so forth. Uh, a few things about Canada, because Elmer was supposed to be the national capital. Interesting. And, but they chose Ottawa because to defend themselves, they need to place the parliament up right. on a hill. Right. So here, so that's why they, they choose it. So but the British Hotel, there's a gentleman uh, who did bought the place five, six years ago and put over five million in that place to rebuild the, the place to keep it because the story there is, uh, there's a lot, a lot of story. Right, right. The first dollar that they did print in Canada was spent there. Wow. So the, there's a lot of a story uh, on this road. Oh, that's neat, yeah. And there's the marina down uh, at, the, at the end. Right. And there's a beautiful beach there. Uh, and this year they're building, they used to have a restaurant there, but it was getting old and everything. So they did put it down and rebuild a brand new one. It's going to be open probably this summer. Nice. So nice. this is going to be, uh, and they did do a lot of money in the park. Yeah. So I could see in the beginning, when I was here, it's been 30 years, I got business around and everything. Right. Summertime, we used to have 200, 300 people, but now it's thousands yeah, of people that go why, there. Right, it's a really beautiful, quaint main street with, like you said, the historic buildings are really nicely updated. Yeah. People are running really nice businesses in them, restaurants, tea houses. It's, it's a beautiful spot. It's definitely, it's only 10, 15 minutes from Gatineau, Max. So That's it's it. definitely worth a little excursion to this cute little village. It's, yeah, and we have a lot of big trees and so on and so forth. So it's a, yeah. oh, it's a beautiful, it's Tons beautiful. Of history here. Very yeah, it wow. used, we call it, we live in the dead end because it's at the end of Gatineau, all Ottawa right. and everything. But now we're getting known and we could see the changes since five years, like the sure. changes, the tourists is picking up and yeah. everything. So it's, it's real really fun. It's a destination now. If you're in Ottawa, it it's is. definitely worth a little excursion. Yeah. Green tea, usually there's bitterness in green tea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people sometimes they say, ah, oh, the tea is not too good. It's right. bitter and everything. It's only because it's infused too long. Right. Okay. Right. So if it's three or three and a half minutes, stop there. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one. You could infuse it for eight minutes. There would be no problem. Wow. There's no bitterness in, in that. Yeah, sure. Because we got some that it's more tasty a little bit, but you're going to have a, a little. And you got the little stump also. There's two colors in there. I prefer oolong. That's yeah, us too. We're we're Chinese tea specialists, so uh, okay. We don't. Uh, yeah, that's why I like to try. Like when I'm out, I want to try Japanese or yeah. something else, right? Because uh, we have a full line of Chinese tea, but it's fun to try different things. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's so pretty. Yeah, the way we do it, we do it uh, as a frosty, like a smoothie, very frosty. So some are liquid. But there's so many combination you could sure. do with bubble tea. Yeah. And also we just introduced, um, well, in the end of uh, last year, uh, now all of uh, the straw, the lid and the glass, the, well, the cup, it's uh, made with the PLA, it's called. It's a the plastic organic. Right, it's compostable. You got it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Really yeah. So it's uh, to, at least if it goes in the water, well, it's going to dissolve and create no uh, yeah. no problem for the uh, end up for the nature yeah so that end up that's a uh, uh, yeah with that yeah boy oh boy yeah, yeah a lot of I really like that that's a great like morning tea it's really uplifting that's it yeah <laughs> cold cold no no it's cold yeah for sure it's yeah. it's so you ice you can get the bubble in the first uh, oh good luck <laughs> not at all it's a ooh it is it's very really good tropical. though. Yeah, it's very tropical. Oh, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's um, you know what? It's it's not super sweet. It's got sweetness, of course, but it's really uh, compared to a lot of desserts. Yeah, it's really um, it doesn't leave you with that 
no, with this. <coughs> that's you it. You have a big one and you're not feeling cold. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and the beauty also, like if some, we got some customer that sometimes they say, I'm not too, in, too sweet or whatever, we could put only half a quarter of sugar in there. Right. No or no sugar. There's right, some people right, yeah, who takes yeah. no sugar, so we don't put nothing in there. So it's uh... We're just heading towards the Vanna Tea Room or the Vanna Tea Room at the corner of Bay and Somerset here in Ottawa. I'm looking forward to visiting here. I have not been to this tea house yet and it's going to be really wonderful to see, see what it's all about. So I'm in the Vanna Tea Room with Hind. I'm really excited to be here. It's a bit of a different vibe than I'm used to and it's my first time here so I'm really excited to chat with you Hind about the Vanity Room and what its offerings are. Absolutely. So we are an afternoon, of course, and, and it's true to its name, we do provide afternoon tea and a more modern avant-garde approach to it. So something classic done traditionally but with a bit of a twist so we gained a little bit of harmony with that. Additionally we've also introduced brunch as one of our services as well. So we have an all-day breakfast menu during our operating mm. hours which is so much fun and of course we cater specialized events around it. So uh, one of the most popular currently is our drag brunch which has become quite infamous. Right. Uh, we really do have such a close relationship with the LGBT community in Ottawa so oh, that's we are awesome. so thankful for their support and the fact that it's become such a populated event in support of the drag queens and of course in support of our restaurant with a creative brunch menu to boot uh, not to mention that we also offer bottomless mimosas yes we offer bottomless mimosas <laughs> it's so fun <laughs> it's always something to laugh about because people get so excited like we never drink mimosas anymore <laughs> but everyone still loves them nice. um, and it's just such a great way to kind of like get everybody together and create like a beautiful ambiance like there's beautiful brunch places in Ottawa but we really try to cultivate a feel to it with right. great music great food and of course an endless amount of beverages actually but that's the general schematic in the manifesto of the vanity room beauty with flavor wow mm -hmm. that's perfect mm -hmm. yeah that's that's an awesome vibe that you've created here and you're in a great location for that too right mm -hmm. at the corner i think we're at somerset and bay exactly yeah walkable from it the market is. and from the downtown from it parliament is. Mm. it is well downtown has become actually recently i'm really happy to see that there's some new restaurants and new new establishments going in that are actually very creative and very yeah. authentic and extremely extremely innovative which is nice because right. we didn't really have that for quite yeah. some time and so with so many of the restaurants, like the culture has just shifted so much to more of the boroughs. So Westboro has become extremely popular. Right. And then you also have Wellington Street. And then you have us in this neighborhood in Centertown where you've got incredible restaurants such as Feirouz and local as well as uh, Mama Traces, I believe. I think Mama Traces, yeah. Bureaucracy. So a lot of creative restaurants. Yeah, places that seem to be putting in a bit more effort, just yes. like you guys are doing, to yes. create something unique and special yes. rather than just a place to go in. Eat. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And Centerstown has such an incredible colorful neighborhood as well. Mm. Like great people, uh, slowly gentrifying, of course, which has been pretty resolute for the last two years. I've seen yeah. more people moving into the area, uh, more business owners deciding to set up shop as well, because yeah. we have Burling across the street from us. Yeah. And then down the street, uh, further down on West uh, Somerset, you have uh, Corner Peach, which is phenomenal as well. So they do a lunch service too. So we're part of a community, finally. It's just uh, taken a while. That's so cool. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're doing too, reaching out to other folks in yeah. team and building that community. So yes. it's just uh, communities interlinking. Well, and the beautiful thing about the tea is that, so with tea being such an uh, integral part of our service, of course, uh, we try to create a conversation with people. And we're so happy to see that the tea has grown so substantially in its popularity, this particular company, uh, that now several of the establishments, if not almost all of them, are carrying Sloan. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just, it's so widespread in variety that it sort of attracts different people from different kinds of establishments. Establishments. Ours being a bit more of a formal setting, uh, so we do have the tea collection sure. here. Uh, so as you can see, it's, uh, it's quite substantiated right. in terms of the variety and the different flavors that we have. So there's quite a few options to choose from, and everyone that tends to carry Sloan carries somewhat of a different collection. Right, right. They have tons of varieties yes. to choose from. Yes, mm. exactly. So tea's quite exceptional. 
in our culture now, way more than it was, I think, when we first opened. It was deafeningly quiet for the tea culture, <laughs> but it's improved quite awesome. a bit. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of people come here for just tea or mostly branch with the size tea? It's, it's hard to say because we've defined ourselves more as a restaurant now, so mm -hmm. we don't have nearly as many uh, people that are authentically just coming just to have a cup of tea. That's, uh, yeah. it, it's a little different. Like right. the original philosophy of our establishment when we first opened was to really focus on the culture of tea, but it doesn't reach an outward enough demographic yeah. of people that are able to keep a, keep it, especially an independent establishment, functional. Yeah. So we had to adopt and adapt other practices within sure. the business that were still very much in parallel, hence right. being more of a restaurant as yeah. opposed to just the focus of being a tea house. Yeah, and I love that about the place because it is still a tea house where you can get a nice sip of tea exactly. but also have a full meal, so exactly. that's a great... A great blend, actually. A exactly. great mix. And it's, and it's less. Um it's less facetious, I find as well. People are often intimidated that when they come to any tea house, that they have to have afternoon tea or that they have to have a cup of tea. Um, and then there's a formality to it as opposed to a more casual setting such as a cafe. So mm -hmm. we've got, we were trying to really strive to find a way to be inclusive where there's still an education about the tea. Right. But furthermore, like you treat it as, as a place that you come to often with friends or family in a less formal way. Right. Um, and well, that's what tea is all about. It's about gathering and exactly. communing together with friends and family. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. The process of our production is done with everything being made in-house. So literally almost everything you see on the menu, with the exception, I'd say, of like an olive, for example, right, <laughs> might right. be outsourced. But in terms of the baking, in terms of the patisserie, uh, in terms of all the jams, in terms of all of the sociés, like all of that is made in-house, uh, which I was, you know, initially dismayed about. I thought, oh my goodness, this is going to kill our food costs. <laughs> but it was amazing to see just the sheer gratification that people receive from well quality yes. well made food oh yeah with standard and so we're great for Florida now yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm really looking forward to trying you'll it you'll love it you'll yeah. absolutely love it it's very very sincere in its quality yeah. so Tastes. And and how it is the uh, establishment open in the evenings as well? Like, is it uh, clubbish? Does it? I got the feeling that it might transform from a tea room into kind of almost a club vibe. Is yeah. that? Am I off base? Not or? at all. Not oh, at cool. all. <laughs> Friday night. I love that about this space. I think it's a great. I'm so glad that you like it. Then you have to come. Drake mm. dinner is every Friday, uh, and it is a ball. Like it's it's amazing to see the space at night, especially enacted with drag queens and you know right. amazing music and great cuisine and an endless supply of alcohol. It's. Uh, quite uh, debauchery but mm, it's great nice, nice. <laughs> it's healthy debauchery uh, and we only do it once a week and we're hoping to integrate another dinner event into the week but it's about creatively trying to figure that out because now so many places are doing drag dinner i'm like where did you get the idea i wonder all oh, right right <laughs> so you've had great success with it but that uh, you know flattery is a uh, or uh what do they say uh, um mimicking is a sincerest form of flattery there we go yes but originality should be the sincerest yeah, form yeah, of flattery. Yeah, well, but I'm happy that it's yeah. taken on such stride and that more importantly, the drag queens are benefiting the most from it. That's um, awesome. Yeah. And I'm very happy for them for that because when we first started doing drag brunch and drag dinner, uh, it was still very new in the city. And mm. there weren't as many establishments that are, were able to cultivate and create a show based around just drag. Yeah, and beautiful. so now I have a lot of successful establishments doing it as well. All of which carry Sloan, go figure. <laughs> Nostalgic Cafe also carries our mm -hmm. brand of tea as well, uh, as does the Common as well, and uh, I believe there's one more that I'm missing, but quite Yeah, a few. there's tons. Tons, 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 tons. So I order the, uh, the Vanity, uh, the Vanity Room Custom Blend. Yes, yes. This was a mix of some... Uh, Assam Black. Assam. Yeah, and um, and so there's some scented. It's scented a little bit, or blended a bit in some way. Yeah, it smells really good, and it comes with a cute little timer with three, four, and five minutes. Mm -hmm. And we had a one cream and milk on each side. So pretty classic high tea. Fun. Looking we, forward to trying it. Right.
Yum, 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 yummy time. One sign that reflects we don't drink this kind of tea much is we drop the tea bag in a pot. Whole string went in. Whoops, we I had to, to go fishing it for it. <laughs> and that's why you don't have nice things. <laughs> okay, so our food is here. What we order is the afternoon tea here. Wow. Okay, from the lower, from the lower layer, the pink egg, egg salad, or something. Yep. And uh, uh, what do you call those? Cream puff. I think cream that's puff. a cream puff. Okay. I'm not sure what this is. It looks super good. Okay. Most of the stuff I don't recommend. Biscuits and jam. Biscuit. Right? Okay. And uh, I'm not sure what this is, but it looks delicious. Or this. This looks a little bit like a creme brulee, but it's not a creme brulee. It's a right. different thingy. And then some more biscuity kind of things. This layer, can you see this layer cracker properly? This is really interesting. Okay. I'm gonna bring it around for you. Oh, wow, cool. One, two, three layers. So really fancy and really fun. I'm excited yeah. to try all of this, but I'm very excited. And I think we'll start with the Benny Tower, right? I think so. Because it's a warm dish. So the Benny are here. Vertical eggs Benny. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Is that hush brown? Yep. Yep. Um, top and some sauce. Dipping sauce. Oh, okay. I'm so excited. So let's bring that front and center. Really nice presentation. Oh, and this. What is this? I'm tasting it. Oh, it's a little ice cream. <laughs> nice. It's vanilla ice cream. We should try that first. Yeah. That's why she said it. It yeah. will melt. Oh, okay. cute little spoon. Yeah. Oh. So that was quite delicious. I'm uh, I'm already pretty much done. So we're gonna give Chen on cam a little bit here because <laughs> my plate is empty. But the uh, but there's your pork floss and cornbread. Yeah, it's a pulled pork egg spenny. Yeah, it's uh, an interesting twist that I personally love because it's so. Uh, not so sweet, but it does have a sweet, a little bit tartness. Like yep. as a balance, the hollandaise is slightly less. Yep. Like I don't feel it's a strong holiday sauce or something. But if you're open-minded, this is. I yep. Really yeah. Good. And the the base is not overly bready or doughy. It's got a really Which nice. Is important. Yeah, it's got a nice, uh, nice crumbly texture, mm -hmm. but it's still very moist. I was a little surprised by the. Uh, the sweetness of the cornbread plus the sweetness of the pork yeah. just just uh, it just got me off guard but still very delicious the potatoes are cooked to perfection crispy outer coating <gasps> let me just show you this potato I mean these are just magical things of beauty look at it look at that's going straight in the mouth mm. and seasoned really nicely and the cheese mild Mm, yeah, we did a five minutes deep as recommended, and the pop was about half full. Um, I and will go a little bit more if I'm going to put milk. Right, yeah, absolutely. But straight up, it's pretty good. It's a really mild, good breakfast tea. Mm. Very good breakfast tea, yep. Mm. And now I'm going to get back to focusing on eating. Okay, so I already took a bite, but. Yes, so, we're starting on the tower On the tower of high tea. Mm -hmm. And this smells like smoked salmon, a smoked salmon like cream puff kind of thing. Right. Mm. Mm. It's not very fishy. Mm? It's not very fishy. Very oh, not mild. at all. Favorite, but more smoky, has a nice smoky texture. And this, the little cream puff pastry shell is really crispy and delicious. Now, I think at high tea, I have to do that, right? <laughs> mm. Next. <laughs> 
So look at pink how... Egg, pink egg, no? Oh, you want to do an egg? Yeah, because there's a pink. I'm a little bit scared. Oh, I'm excited about the pink I egg. I feel like a pickle. I'm going to grab it with a fork. I tried to use my fingers, but it's a little bit too flexible. And I think you're right, it might be pickled. It feels really... Use your hand. I don't drop it. Slippery. Really slippery. Whew, that was tense. That was amazingly intense. I was so nervous. Mmm. Mmm. That's really good. Egg salad with egg white. And it's pink, so it's amazingly cool. I thought it would have a ginger flavor because it's pink. Oh, like the... <laughs> exactly. I think that's why I think it's a pickle. <laughs> It's yummy. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Not sure how to eat the next one, but it's this cute little pastry on a spoon. Cut it. Ew. Okay, okay. You can tell I'm really not good with fork and knife. Don't worry, no one's judging you. <laughs> so that's the concept? I think that's exactly what you're supposed to do. I think you just nailed that. Well done. Well, that's a way. No, I'm pretty sure that's the way. Okay. I think if you do it any other way, they'll come out and correct you. Oh, I think this matches this a little bit Indian. Oh, it's for the, maybe that's for the sauce. Dip a little bit. We'll oh, see. good call, good call. Indian flavor? Yeah, curry kind of thing. I'm eager to try it. That or what? I got the blood. I don't know how to describe this. Like... Indian? <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. I'll try it. I'm not too good at describing Indian flavor too. It's like, what do you say? It's curry, right? Yeah. It's definitely pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna try it live from behind the camera. Let's do a camera pass, a live camera pass. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna cut mine in half. I'm gonna do a little, a one piece sort of naked and the other piece with the sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Right? It's really good. I just, you know, uh, it's kind of like a... Little a little bit spicy. A little bit less spicy. It's kind of like a falafel kind of uh, oh, yeah, vibe. Yes, yes. Mm. That's right. That's very good. A seasoned chickpea. This is definitely sort of a chickpea kind of thing going on. Did you mm. put the sauce? No, I wanted to have a naked piece first, but now I'm going to try it with the sauce. Oh, look at that dribbling down. Ta-da! Mm. Mm. It's really good with that. The sauce is kind of like a, an Indian... Uh, not butter chicken, more tikka, but it's Indian spices in the sauce. And it really does make it hard to tell that it's a, it's sort of a falafel chickpea thing underneath, but a very good blend, very nice flavor in the mouth. I think that might be my favorite thing so far, in terms of just a mouth experience. Right. Mm.